That's not a comic book. Now that's a comic book. Hi there, ladies and gentlemen. I am Sid Pardue. Joining me today is Danny the Lizard for this week's episode of Comic Reviews. You're getting heavy, and you can't sit on my shoulder like a parrot anymore. Um, anyway, so this week we'll get right into it. Um, after I get him off my shoulder, because he's, like, pulling down my entire shirt. You're an adorable co-host, and you make for great thumbnails, but you're getting fat, so you need to work on that. Uh, anyway, so, let's go ahead and get started with Grant Morrison's 18 Days, and also, let me say, new camera, no auto-focus-y craziness. I'm excited. Um, so anyway, Grant Morrison continues to tell Indian mythology, and, like, I think that's actually quite brilliant for a, a Western, or what is seen as a Western writer, to tell just um, Eastern myths, because it seems incredibly original, even though it's it's probably not. This is probably, like, the worst version of these myths, I imagine. Um, but anyway, so this tells the story of a blind king whose um, wife has been uh, pregnant for over two years, and he has a recurring dream about a wolf that's going to, like, a wolf that walks like a man who's destroying the universe or the world. And a peacock that comes with the, the world in its mouth uh, and is not afraid of the wolf. And so the, the king is convinced that that will be his son. And so his wife has this just monstrous thing as a baby that, like, it's not even really human. Um, that... His wife births that, and then uh, that's split up into a hundred children by some kind of crazy person. Um, and he names each child, and, and he's sure that that will be the uh, that these children will will save the world. But then on the last page, we have this last panel, even this creepy image of of the child's one of the kid's eyes the firstborn child's eyes turning red and and looking like it's it's going to be evil or something um and so that that was the image that's mirrors the image of the wolf that we see earlier in the book um its eyes are red and scary like uh and then this guy's on the cover and he's the one of the guys we see battling at the or in the other issues or, or preparing for battle so my assumption is that this is his birth that we watched. Um, though I don't, I don't know the names yet, so it's, I can't be completely sure that's the case. But anyway, um, it is really compelling stuff, and I'm enjoying it more and more as I go into it. It's just one of those things where I'm already on shaky ground with it because I really don't know enough about the mythology on its own, and I don't know any of the none of the names are sticking with me because i've never heard them before so i'm having trouble keeping it in all in my head um especially with a month between each book like i'm a guy where i will forget a character's name page to page until i'm a couple chapters into a book so um this is really hard for me to to keep all in my head um especially with grant morrison who's who is a writer that is so out there, um, and, and all-encompassing in, in how he writes stuff, so I, I think I'm gonna have a hard time getting through the rest of this book, but the stories on their own, like, issue to issue, I am enjoying it, and I'm, I, it's really helpful that it's a comic book, because I'm remembering the faces, even if I'm not remembering the names, like, I'm pretty sure, not the Blind King, but, like, his, um, his number one or whatever, I believe he's one of the characters we saw in the last issue, but I'd have to get that issue out and compare him. Um, but yeah, this is just really interesting stuff to read, and it's it's a lot of fun, and I think it'll be a cool way for me to get into Indian mythology, because it's something I've never even, like, read up on or anything before. So, really good stuff. Um, only two ninety nine, dollars so I, I think it's definitely worthwhile. Um, there are interviews with Morrison on the back, but I don't like reading stuff where creators talk about their work, because I like to just, I like to figure it out on my own before I go to that stuff. Like, I like to read a work or, or watch a movie or whatever, um, get into it on my own, and, and then read into it on my own before I see them 
talking before I see the creators or, or the people behind it talking about it um, too much because I, I want to have my own impressions first. But really good book. Um, er, enjoyable book. I don't know if it's good yet, but it's Grant Morrison. I have to assume so. Good? Okay. Uh, DC Comics Bombshells number two. Um, the fight for freedom. Join the waves. So I got Alex into this. Um, <laughs> and we, we have just a really cool Wonder Woman origin here. And then a, um, a continuation on where we're left with the Supergirl thing. Uh, the Wonder Woman origin is, is more or less just her basic origin. It just has Mira involved now which is fine. Uh, and then we're also introducing Zatanna. Um, I'm not quite sure what's going on with Zatanna, because she's like, she's doing an act for, for German officers, but at the end, there's this line that the Joker's daughter has, would, you would prefer your chances in the ghetto of the Jews. So I think that's implying that, um, that Zatanna is Jewish, but because of her talents and, and stuff, she's being allowed to entertain and, and live a life of luxury. And that that wasn't uncommon in Nazi Germany. Um, the Supergirl stuff was really interesting. We have, um, very similar to uh, Re Superman Red Sun, where, you know, all, the only real difference between Superman's character is he lands in Russia, Soviet Russia, as opposed to Kansas. Um, and Alex mentioned some anti-Soviet stuff. I'm like, I guess maybe the Soviets aren't exactly the best people in history to me. I mean, there's a picture of Stalin in the background here. Uh, yeah, there you go. Stalin's in the background. and Stalin, not, not the best person in the world, but like I, I like the, the way that, in which they're portraying him as, as very pragmatic. Um, but interesting stuff nonetheless. I mean, I kind of got Alex into this by just saying, Soviet Supergirl, uh, fighting with the Red Army. And, and the whole reason that she's arrested and everything is because, um, they assume that she's a Nazi super weapon. So that's really clever. Uh, so I don't know, I, I found this very entertaining. Um, not in love with it as much as I was with the first issue, but it's still really cool, really fun. Um added this to my poll because it's it's great stuff. I'm a little disappointed that Wonder Woman's not wearing the cover she's wearing, or wearing the cover. I'm a little disappointed that Wonder Woman's not wearing the outfit that she's wearing on the cover. Um, I think she might be soon though, because like in this issue she's leaving the island so she's still got Toga pretty much. Um, but I, that's what I'm hoping is that, that we'll see that kind of like uh, Rosie the Riveter look for. Her. Um, because I just, I always thought that was cool. Uh, so hopefully that's what we'll see her, her kind of wearing, but if not, it's okay. If it's just, like, classic costume, that's fine too, I guess. I just, I think the Rosie the Riveter thing is cool. Um, fun stuff, though. It's, it's really enjoyable, really brings a smile to your face if you, if you want to pick this up. We did a Geeky Gentleman on, uh, Justice League The New Frontier. I'll put the, uh, link up over here. Um, and... Of course, down in the description if you want to watch that. But uh, we talked about how it's just that, that immediate nostalgia for a time you were not alive in. Um, that's that's really what this is capitalizing on as well. So there's there's a link for you right there. Uh, Batman Beyond number three. Oh, four. Buddy Suit Batman is the beginning of the Terry McGinnis costume. Man, I love Batman Beyond, but that's the problem. Is this, like, what's, what's the line in the beginning of this book? It's, it's a micron that says it. Uh, you don't sound like McGinnis. Who the hell are you? And Tim's like, look, I said. And Barbara goes, Terry is dead. This is his replacement. 
You know the old saying, Kamish. The clothes don't make the man. I've never been the biggest Tim Drake fan. There's nothing wrong with Tim Drake. I just, he's not my character, you know? And so the idea of, let's finally make Tim Drake Batman, because that's what he was always meant to be. Dick Grayson went off and became Nightwing to be his own man before Tim Drake was around. Jason Todd obviously didn't work out. So so let's make Tim Drake, so Tim Drake was supposed to be the Robin that would become Batman. So that's the premise behind this book at this point is let's really go for it and make Tim Drake Batman. So far, all he's done is fuck up. I'm not enjoying this book right now. Um, you know, the, the Terry McGinnis Batman Beyond book that was coming out before this, before Future's End, and, and it... And, Kissing at me, motherfucker. Um, and it ended and stuff. That was good. It didn't end on the best note, but the majority of it was great. Um, and this is off to such a rocky start. I just want this stuff with the eye to be over so that we can get on to proper Batman Beyond stuff. And the Jokers are like... The Jokers are happy that the eye has come because they, they want to see Gotham destroyed and all that stuff. I'm like, for some of the Jokers, I'm okay with that, but the Jokers were just kids. Like, the, the point of the Jokers was to do the, the gangs in Clockwork Orange. Um, not a lot of people realize this, but that's just what kids did in that universe, Clockwork Orange, was just go out and, and commit horrible crimes because it was fun. And that's what the Jokers are supposed to be doing, but now they want, you know, to be mindless drones for Brother I. This book is killing me, man. It feels like a bad fan fiction. Um, Jurgens? I don't know what he's done. I'm just really disappointed. Um... This is not at all what I was hoping for when I heard they were doing Batman Beyond again. And even with Tim Drake, this is... This is bad for Tim Drake. Um, really not enjoying this book right now. Like, I was I was trying to be nice with the first three issues. I'm like, okay, it's set up. They're doing their thing. Four issues in, it's a little too long for set up. And the story is not picking up in a direction I like at all. Um... Just, just the Brother Eye stuff needs to be done so we can get to Batman Beyond. And and right now it's not Batman Beyond. It's Tim Drake trying to fill boots for a character that, that he he has no business trying to fill the boots for. Um, not not really caring for this. This is probably the, the low point of my books this week. Um, yes, that's the tripod, Dan. You can keep licking it. Um... Yeah, this is the low point for for my books this week. Uh, not enjoying this at all. Just feels so lame. Um, I'll keep reading it just because I like Batman Beyond. But someone, you know, I, if if you're on the fence about whether to go pick this up, don't. I'll let you know if it gets good. The Four Doctors, Part 3 and Part 4 of 5, um, Doom Coalition with, is that John Sims Master? No. Paul McGann advertisements on the back. I like Paul McGann. The Eighth Doctor is awesome. Um, the movie sucks, but the Eighth Doctor himself is awesome. Anyway, so Parts 3 and 4 of The Four Doctors. Um, so I'm not sure exactly who the Fourth Doctor is. At the end of this issue, we're, we're shown in the middle of this issue a continuity bomb in which uh, it's kind of like that turn left episode of um, the, the Donna Noble uh, part of the of Tenant's run where she like made a different choice and 
her life turned out in a different way. So this is this is pretty much that, wherein different options are presented to the doctors at different times, and and so it changes reality and and goes to an alternate timeline. Blah blah blah. Uh, for the tenth doctor, it's the the Wilfred moment, um, with with the radiation and the cabinet and stuff. Um, and that was it's really messed up to see, but it's it's a good shocking alternate timeline to start out on. And then for Matt Smith's Doctor, it's um, when all of history was happening at one time, uh, but he gets to live a happy life with whoever's song. That's really nice, too. Uh, but then with the Twelfth Doctor, it's a version of him that got betrayed by Clara and kicked her out of the TARDIS, and so he's just kind of gone crazy, like, suffering in there for God knows how long. Um... And then at the end of the issue, our fourth doctor, so they decide to stick with that version because at least he has a TARDIS and it's the least catastrophic of all the different versions. But then the the possible fourth doctor in all of this is the bad guy now. Um, it's really, really crazy. Uh... I, I hope that's not the fourth Doctor. If, if you have a book called The Four Doctors, I want to see all four of them working together. And it's a really great um, plot we got going on here, and that, that carries over right into this issue uh, with the, the other three Doctors trying to figure out how to stop him and, and the, the fourth Doctor's reasoning for all of this, the, the alternate twelfth Doctor, let's call him. Um, his reasoning for all this is actually really interesting, really cool. But at the same time, it's just, it's all over the place, and it's its really fascinating Doctor Who stuff. As soon as this is done next week, I'm going to go through and read them all again, um, just to see how well it builds up. But anyway, um, it's its really interesting stuff, though. Uh, and we get to see the, the comic book companions hanging out and stuff, and it looks like one of them might have died, which is fascinating. Um... And then Gabby opens some comics up, and, and the Vrood, as they call themselves, Vord, the Vord, I don't know. Um, they say it's for Gravestone, and we don't really know what's happened. We just see a screen off-panel. Um, so it's just really interesting craziness uh, going on between these two issues. And it, it's a Doctor Who big, you know, what-the-shit plot. Um, and I hate to say it. And this isn't to say anything against the story itself. But the best thing in both of these issues is this little backup comic called The Meeting. And and I just I'm gonna just read the very first panel. My name's Alice and I'm a companion of the Doctor. Hi, Alice. And it's it's Companions Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really really funny i cracked up as soon as i saw that um and it's not just new companions they they have uh they have some of the others just chilling in the background and stuff um and it's, it's really funny uh cracked me the hell up and and i just i laughed for a good five minutes after reading that that comic and just the, the opening was perfect but yeah this is there's there's not a ton to say right now about the the main story though. Um it's it's really fucking timey wimey. Um it's all over the place. It's really neat to learn different things about the time war like a continuity bomb being a thing. Um we get to see a brief scene in this issue, no, this one where the um the other companions get to hang out with the other doctors. So, uh, you get Clara and Matt Smith again. And then you get uh, Alice hanging out with David Tennant, and you get Gabby hanging out with um, Capaldi. So that's that's fun. Uh, really clever a little switch up, which it's, it's always fun to get that kind of stuff where the, the companion hangs out with a different doctor. Um, but yeah, really fun fun books. Uh, I'm I'm loving this crossover, and if it continues in this quality for the final issue, which I hope it will. Um, We'll definitely have a another one down the road. 
Uh, my my mission though is to still get Titan Comics to publish a classic Doctor book. Just go one through eight different stories with each of them. Maybe have it all connect if you really want, but you don't need it to. It'd just be fun to have Doctor Who comics with the classic Doctors. Anyway, really cool stuff. And then the final book of the week is this um, 10th Doctor number 15. At least this story arc's over. My god. Um, this one dragged on for quite a while. But it is a satisfying ending. Uh, the whole Egyptian thing ends up being connected to, um, what's his name? They say it like a million times. Uh... Sutek. So, anyone that knows the Tom Baker episode, Pyramids of Mars, I think it's called, it is on Netflix. My TV's over there, which is why I'm playing that way. It is on Netflix in the classic Doctor Who episodes if you want to watch that, but they there is a really good Tom Baker episode called Pyramids, Pyramids of Mars, which deals with the Egyptian god Sutek. And so that's what this has all been building up to, is that the son of Sutek is Anubis, and Anubis is trying to prove that he's not like his father, and, and there's a whole thing. Um, I'm just glad it's over. I know people have been, like, hoping and praying for a, a return of the Sutek thing for years now in Doctor Who. Um, you got it. Maybe it reads better all at once. I'm not going to give it the time. Uh, reading it once was by far, by far and away enough for me. Um, Anubis looks cool. It's kind of, it's nice to see Doctor Who without having to worry about a budget and without having to, you know, get over bad effects. That's, that's one great thing about the comics. Uh, so, you know, Anubis looks good and all the, the crazy architecture-y stuff they're doing and throughout this run was really fun to see. Um... Like, hold on, let me get to a panel, because I thought it was pretty cool. This issue mostly is, though, just, just Anubis laser-eyeing people, um, and telling them to sh stop talking to him, and then them getting up and, and talking to him some more. Um, oh, where's it at? Dang it. It's, it's basically like a pyramid floating through space and into, like, a black hole, um, just cool little stuff that you probably couldn't pull off even nowadays in the show and have it look very well, very good. Um, I'm just hoping this book gets back to some of the, you know, lower scale stories. Um, I, I think it's been fun to just read, you know, some of the cool stuff. I, I want to see some Daleks show up in this. They haven't showed up yet in the, in the 10th Doctor book. I think I'm going to pick up the, um, the 11th and 12th Doctor trades and see if I like them as much as I have the, the 10th Doctor book. Because honestly, this if this were the first thing I was picking up, I would abandon this after issue like three. Um, but it is all the other issues of this book so far that I've picked up. But I mean, a year in and we start getting a, a pretty lame story arc. Not the best of signs, but I'm hoping it picks up, picks up and gets a bit better with the next story arc. Um, and I want more of Gabby's art. I really like Gabby's art. Um, and and we, it's been a couple issues since we had that in this, so. Anyway, that'll do it for comic reviews this week. I know, I'm sorry, I don't have a trade. I've been working on animating things this week instead of reading, a tra reading through a trade. Um, and it's... Maya's a pain in the ass some days, so, you know. Anyway, so I'm, I'm getting done with that. Whenever that's done, I'll get back to my trades. I'm, like, this close. I just gotta start a render, but it just keeps giving me one little problem. It's driving me crazy. So I'll get back to trades soon, but for this week, all we had is single issues, so I hope you'll forgive me for that. Anyway, everyone, thank you very much for watching this week's episode of Comic Reviews. If you have a comic that is coming out monthly that you would like me to pick up and, and hear my thoughts on, please leave it in the comments below. Leave your comic in the comments below. Leave your comic in the comments below. Leave your comic in the comments below. Damn. Um, 
anyway, leave that in the comments below. If you have a trade that you think is really good that you'd like to hear my thoughts on, leave it in the comments below. I will keep an eye out for it, and if I come across it, I'll pick it up off the shelf. Anyway, everyone, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, bye.